Oh, 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 oh. Ah, that's better. So today, we are winterizing our animal setup a little bit, and I wanted to explain to y'all our rationale for having the chickens outside in the garden. I'm gonna spread it over here where they've been sleeping. So, I thought long and hard about this and have been thinking about it ever since we got the chickens. One of my ideas was to put the chickens down in one of the empty stalls in this barn. Now, there would be some advantages to that, but there's one really big drawback. And that is, once the chickens make all that wonderful compost bedding in the barn, I would have to move it from the barn to the garden. And with 30 chickens, um, making probably 250 pounds of manure, in the four, three or four months that I would have them in there, if I kept the carbon nitrogen balance right, I would have to add in a ton of strom and a ton of carbon material. That would be several thousand pounds of compost that I'd have to move up the hill. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to keep all that material here. And if I move straw, I just move it once from where I get it to the garden. Now, what would my ideal winter chicken setup be? It would be a greenhouse in my garden area where the chickens would go in the winter. You would use a deep bedding system. And then when the chickens were moved out in the summer, you could actually grow in the greenhouse and you could grow there for really three quarters of the year. Now I hope to actually have a greenhouse by next winter and to keep our chickens and also keep a hog in it that can work together with the chickens to deeply turn all the bedding. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just insulating this chickshaw a little bit. These nights this last night and uh, tonight will be some of the coldest nights of the winter. We really don't get this much snow very often, so this is kind of a unique situation. If I lived in the Midwest or lived in uh, the Northeast or part of the country that gets a lot of snow every winter and has those sub-zero temperatures throughout the winter every winter, then I would not be keeping my chickens in a chick shaw. But the thing is, chickens do awesome in cold weather. They don't like the snow, but they're very resilient as long as they're not exposed directly to those sub-zero temperatures, which can, of course, freeze their combs and freeze their feet. So the rest of this week is actually supposed to be back to kind of normal winter weather for us. Normal winter weather, um, lows, in the 20s, 30s, even 40s later on this week. Now this straw is not cheap, but the cool thing about using this straw in this application is that 
there's no waste here. This straw is gonna end up being the carbon matter in our compost in this garden. The chicken manure is gonna to add to it and all of it is gonna stay <laughs> right here. So this straw, I paid money for it. Uh, it's an input that I'm bringing in. I'm making the choice to bring that in to uh, my homestead. This straw is not going to waste. It's gonna join the soil and it's gonna grow our gardens for years to come. I was given a really cool gift recently. I, um, someone gave me their old iPod. Now, Justin Rhodes is gonna be thrilled to hear that I have this because he's been encouraging me to use my commute time to work to learn. He's been telling me I should do this for quite a while now. So, I've been listening to permaculture podcasts. I've especially enjoyed the permaculture podcast with Scott Mann. In one of my favorite episodes so far, he talks to his guest and she's talking about how small farm operations that don't input or import a lot of animal food can actually be in some ways um, less productive than kind of factory farms that are input and output based. Um, and something she said just really blew my mind and I wanted to share it with you and it's this. While those big farms may um, be more productive per animal, chickens lay more eggs, um, you know, steers grow faster, broilers reach uh, butchering age a little bit sooner, they're leaky systems. That's what she said, they're leaky systems. There's a lot of waste. So using straw in this application is a great example of kind of a multi-purpose use of resources. We're using this to insulate the chickens, but then it's gonna enrich our soil as well. Now the chickens will have this torn out of here in a couple days. We'll have to add more. So something that might look like a great inefficiency actually has very, very little waste. So that's what I love about having chickens in the garden. The chicken food you buy, it doesn't go to waste. Not only do you get eggs, and if you're raising birds for meat, you get meat, but the chickens also create this huge amount of nitrogen in their poop. And the nitrogen is one, a plant nutrient, if you're careful with it, and two, it's fuel for a compost pile. It's fuel to break down the carbon materials, which are much less expensive and more easy to get in the form of wood chips, straw, leaves, um, and waste plant material. Something else we do for the chickens in the cold weather is we give them a little extra food. You know, they've got to keep their bodies warm. It takes more calories. It takes more calories to stay warm in the cold weather. And they will eat it, I promise. They will gobble it in this weather. So there's my multi-purpose permaculture winter chicken insulation job. What you doing out here? The last one? You sorry to see this day go? The chickens are happy. We spent a lot of time out here with them today and they all look really good. It's a beautiful evening out here. The moon is coming up and it's, you know, has this halo around it. I wanted to talk to y'all about something really quickly and that is our Patreon account. Some of y'all won't know what Patreon is and that's fine. Patreon is an organization that allows you to... Donald, what you doing, bud? Donald is heralding the coming of night. So Patreon is an organization. It allows you to give money to support people who create stuff that you like. So there's artists who use it. There's people uh, who have podcasts who use it. YouTubers use it. So we're not just asking for everyone's money. We're not saying, hey, go to Patreon, give us money. What we're saying is there's people out there who love our channel and who've said, hey, get a Patreon. How can we support you? How can we support you in what we're, you're doing? And so Patreon is one answer to that. If you're one of those people who loves our videos and is saying, how can I support these people in what they're doing and what they're making, then Patreon may be for you. Something that all of you all do is you give us your time and I want to say thank you for that your time is very valuable and we appreciate it so much thank you all for watching it's been another great day on the homestead